Dr. Vidya Panna Gokarnakar has completed her PhD from Deccan College in the field of Vaisheshika Philosophy under the guidance of Dr. Kashinath Hota in May 2023. The thesis is titled as The Theory of Parmanu with special reference to Vaisheshika system. She has studied Taraka Samagraha under the special guidance of Vidvat Pravar Devadatta Patil in his Patishala at Pune. She has secured first prize in the research paper presentation held at Deccan College in the year 2013 and 2014. She has proposed a research based on the root of factorial method in ancient Indian system of Maharshi Kanal. She has investigated modern scientific research based on particle physics in comparison with ancient Parmanu theory. with iscer professor saurabh dubey and a particle physicist from new york dr abhay deshpande she has delivered lectures on the theory of parmanu in ruya college kj somaiya college and in teachers orientation program as a resource person she is currently working as a sanskrit teacher in parletilak vidyalay english medium school since 13 years She is the active member of Bal Bharati Textbook Committee since 2015 for contributing in standard 8, 9 and 10 Sanskrit textbook. She has contributed a lesson in standard 10 textbook of Sanskrit on the theory of Parmanu. She is the winner of national level Tycathon 2020 organized by Honorable Narendra Modi ji based on innovative ideas in Sanskrit learning through innovative methods. She contributed in the YouTube series Vande Jagat Janani run by Parle Tilak Vidyalaya Association in 2021. She is the active member of teachers training program of Sanskrit Kendra since 2006. She is the script writer and has contributed in writing Sanskrit script. She was awarded as Shastra Jatan Puraskar in 2020 from Ruya College. She has composed more than 50 Sanskrit rhymes. for the beginners in sanskrit language she has made around 15 sanskrit games for the better understanding of sanskrit grammar and has published three books for standard 10 sanskrit guidance welcome vidya vachaspati dr vidnyapana gokarnakar namo namah namas sabhaye नम कणाद गौतमादिभ्य ऋषिभ्य आय हैव स्टडीड द थिअरी ऑफ परमाणू फॉर माय डॉक्टरल स्टडीज द थिअरी ऑफ परमाणू विथ स्पेशल रेफरन्स टू वैशेषिक सिस्टम 
बिफोर आई बिगिन आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू वाई आई स्टडीड ऑन परमाणु वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट एन एटम एज द स्मॉलेस्ट पार्टिकल ऑफ द यूनिवर्स द एंटायर यूनिवर्स इज मेड अप ऑफ मैटर एंड द स्मॉलेस्ट पार्टिकल ऑफ द मैटर इज कंसिडर्ड एज एन एटम आई वॉज कीन टू नो इन अवर एंशियंट थियोरीज where astronomy was very well developed we had six different branches of philosophy where we have been talking about the evolution of the world i wanted to know if at all we the indians indian philosophers indian ancient scientists have they talked about the evolution of the world in terms of smallest particle there were six different branches of philosophy of indian philosophy maharshi kanad he is very well known as the father of indian atomism maharshi kanad was searching the ultimate particle of the formation of the creation of the world today we all know big bang theory we all talk about the evolution of the world we all say that the planets were banged on each other and then the universe was formed but how these planets also were created there must be some ultimate particle in the beginning of this procedure maharshi kana who lived in 6th century bc before christ he has been talking about this type of creation of the world when he was working on the particles he studied the rice grain which were scattered at the prayag kshetra and there he saw this monocot can be powdered 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 and then there comes one point where further division of this particle is not possible that ultimate particle i would say ultimatum is called as parmaan for example even if today i take a piece of paper and then if i try to cut it in the smaller smaller parts there would come one point where the process of division will stop at one time i might not be able to break it further maybe i need some chemical combination to deposit it further into smaller smaller parts but there would come one ultimate point beyond which no further division is possible and that ultimatum is called as parmaanu as per the kanada's theory now this theory might be only theoretical and it was not demonstrated in 5th century bc but what he is talking about there is no further division possible and that's the reason he titled it as परमह अणु परमाणु द डेफिनेशन ऑफ परमाणु गिवन बाय महर्षि कणाद इज परमाणु परम सूक्ष्म आदि अवय स्वयं निरवय अतीन्द्रिय नित्य न दीज आर फ्यू क्वालिटीज ऑफ परमाणु स्टेटेड बाय महर्षि कणाद न वेर इज इ टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑल दिस हि इज टॉकिंग इन हिज वैशेषिक फिलॉसॉफी वैशेषिक सूत्राणी द एफॉरिजम्स विच आर रिटर्न बाय महर्षि कणाद इज ट्रीटेड एज द मेन टेक्स्ट टू एक्सप्लोर इट फर्दर न वॉट डज इट टॉक अबाउट दिस परमाणु इज नित्य इट मीन्स इट नीदर कैन बी क्रिएटेड नॉर कैन बी डिस्ट्रॉयड सो परमाणुज रिमेन स्कैटर्ड इन द यूनिवर्स वेन द डिस्ट्रक्शन अटर डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑल्सो takes place so parmanus pravibhakta ha parmanav pratishthante so these scattered parmanus they remain in the universe later due to maheshwar ichha today we might say it is electromagnetic force due to the electromagnetic force between two parmanus the further process of formation begins and then two parmanus come together and then the further creation begins now this process 
of the combination of parmanu is very interesting he talks about two parmanus coming together and then it forms the first forming body which is called as dvyanuka after we might feel it is three parmanus which would create the next forming body but that is not so later three dvyanukas that means six parmanus will create the next body trenuka now this arithmetic progression is very interesting first comes one parmanu then comes two parmanus then comes six parmanus the later body has got 24 parmanus now i was very keen to find out what exactly is this progression because there is no cell division there is no meiosis no mitosis and nothing is getting divided and in every next forming body the previous forming body is intact it is not getting divided anywhere and then what trenuka the second forming body of six parmanus that trenuka is the first stable body of parmanus now these trenukas are 3d they are three dimension this can be illustrated with the help of human body our body is three dimension we have got multi dimensional brain inside our body and we have one mind which is according to vaisheshika theory is uni dimensional it has got only one dimension because mind has got one dimension mind can think only about one thing at a time now this quality of mind being uni dimensional is used in the theory of parman now our 3d body is the stable body so the forming body trenuka is the very most stable body of parmanus so our body is made up of so many trenukas and that is the reason if we see vaisheshika theory they are talking about the stable bodies of trenukas as the most stable formation of parmanus now this combination is fortunately or unfortunately does not match with the combination of atoms in modern science so whether the question remains is paramah anu hu an atom the word atom is derived from the greek word a tomos tomos is cutable which can be divided into parts is tomos and a tomos which cannot be cut so the derivation of the word atom is very much similar with the word parmanu but what parmanu is meant by maharshi kanada in 6th century bc is absolutely not that atom which we are talking in modern science today and this is one of my very important finding of my research that paramanu should not be translated as an atom it is much much minuter than atom today if we see the atom atom also can be divided in proton neutron and electron if we talk about the nucleus of an atom there are many sub atomic particles inside the atom if we see the standard model of physics there are 12 subatomic particles and many of them are only theoretical till date as jayanta naraykar sir has talked about quark can be the god's particle which is the indivisible particle till date can be studied explored further more even today we are div dividing the actual particle which we are saying is a tomos so the question arises whether modern science has already found parmanu or what maharshi kanad was talking about parmanu then in 5th 6th century bc has become cutable today that becomes the matter of physicist maharshi kanad in 6th century has talked about physics of the nature 
and this theory of Parmanu is very much important in order to understand the astrophysics in ancient India. The word Kanad is Kanan Atti Ti Kanadha. He is titled as the particle eater, which literally means who lived on the theory of Parmanu. Now, where did he study all this? We have got the reference that there were many theories taught in Takshashila. Takshashila is the world's renowned medical college of India. And this was in 10th century BC. Since 10th century BC, we had Takshashila. And when this Maharshi Kanada lived, this theory was taught in Takshashila University. And in Takshashila, there are the references where many princes, many scholars from foreign countries like Tibet, Russia, Nepal, China, Greece, they used to come to India. It was not easy to come to India then, but then also they used to cross the ocean, cross the mountain and they would come to India to learn different scientific theories and atomic theory was one of them. This Paramano theory was called as the theory of four particles by the foreign people. Now the Democritus who is called as the father of foreign atomism, he is the Greek philosopher. And in the history of ancient India, there is a mention that this Democritus, he had come to India in 4th century BC. So, the matter remains whether Maharshi Kanat spoke about atomism first or it happened in Greece in 5th or 6th century BC. Or these were two parallel concepts in both the countries. While talking about the actual primitiveness of this theory, it comes to Maharshi Kanad. Now, did we have laboratories then? Of course, we had laboratories. In Takshashila, we had surgical instrumental instruments also. So, definitely we had different types of apparatus. I tried to find whether we had a microscope then. I did not get the reference of microscope, but I got the references of lenses, I got the references of magnifying glasses and magnifying glasses, they were referring to the all symmetrical structures, crystalline structures of different things. And these crystalline structure would help us to know Parmanu theory in terms of dimensions. Now people question how exactly did they find if they could not see Parmanu. Because Paramanu is Atindriya, it is beyond the reach of sense organs. So the point is, in Nyaya Kandali commentary, uh, Shridharacharya says that human body itself was the laboratory. So inside the mother's womb, how exactly the baby is getting formed was talked in terms of Paramanu. And to our surprise, even Ayurveda, Ancient Ayurveda supports the theory of Parmanu of Maharshi Kanad. They are talking about the union of the male sperm and the female zygote in terms of Parmanu. So, Shukra Shonita Sanyoga will give rise to Kalala Garbha. And how this Garbha is created, they are talking in terms of Parmanu in many of the Vaisheshika commentaries. And how exactly the Parmanus are taking part in the formation of a baby exactly in the period of 9 months, how the baby is formed, how exactly the particles of hand are attracted towards the particles of hand, how exactly the particles of eyes are going to the eye. So today we say it is genetic coding, today we say it is because of the random shuffling of RNA helix in DNA. But then this was talked again. In 5th and 6th century BC by Maharshi Kanada, he talks about individuality. How one individual is different than other. He says every Paramanu is different. Every Paramanu has got its Vishesha in it. 
and that is the reason the entire theory is called as Vaisheshik. So, even there are two mango trees looking similar, they are not similar, they are different. Even two twins are not similar. So, this individuality is there in that Paramanu itself. So, what is the nature of this Paramanu? How does it look? How is the structure of Paramanu? In the theory, they have been talking about the structure of Trenuka, which is the next forming body. But if you try to think about the structure of Paramanu, Paramanu is again unidimensional. Paramanu is hollow inside. Just like the sun and the planets revolve around, there is one center and then all other Paramanus, they revolve around it. So, even if we say six Paramanus come together, they do not come together this way because otherwise they would be divisible. These Paramanus remain intact in the universe and they are connected by the field created by every single Paramanu around it. So, the every single Paramanu remains intact and that is the reason Paramanu remains indivisible. So, this is how Paramanu remains intact as we would put one drop of water to the other drop of water and the, the mass would get united together, we will get the aggregate of water particles. Similarly, Paramanus get united and aggregated together to form the body. So, because there is one specific combination in every different Paramanu, Parmanus of hands come together, Parmanus of leg come together and in, inside the mother's womb, in the darkness, there is no fault, no flaw in the creation and the formation of a baby. And why the baby cannot live inside the womb after 9 months, it is because the Parmanu get increased in number and then the baby has to come out of the mother's womb and then it will have the external growth. Now, this has been studied, investigated with the reference of medical science. Even then, if Maharishi Kanada is talking about this Paramanu theory, definitely there was demonstration. As today we demonstrate on plants and then we talk about uh, the inventions. Similarly, then also they had studied, they have studied how the pot is getting backed, how many sec uh, seconds are required for the baking of the pot. So, they are talking at the Paramanu level, how the color of the baking pot is getting changed. It is very well known as the Pakaja Prakriya in the Vaisheshika theory. Later on, unfortunately, what happened? Vyaya, uh, Nyaya Vaisheshika theory, Nyaya theory and Vaisheshika theory, these two theories got fused. And because of that, the primitiveness of Vaisheshikas got lost. Later on, even in Takshashila University, this theory was limited to the student because it was talking about physics in the nature. And because of that, it was not popular. It was very important. It was very scientific, but it was not popular. And so, it became the theory of four element in foreign countries. Today, while talking about the evolution of the world, how the world is created, how the world can be divided. Maharshi Kana divides the world beautifully in six categories. He put every single creation in the first category of Dravya. In the first category itself, everything which is created is put. Then we would have a question, then what would be in second category? For example, if I say, this is a table. Then the table would come in the first category. Then in the second category, he would talk about its qualities. This table has got four legs. This table is like this, the structure. Then in third category, he talked about the usage. So, Dravya is the first category. Then Guna is the second category. Dravya, Guna. Then Karma is the third category. 
where we will talk about the usage then samanya so if this is called as the table tomorrow if i see the similar structure i would say it is a table so i find out the similar qualities that would be samanya but then also that table would be different than this table every table would be different though they are manufactured by the same company so every single table would be different that would be vishesh and the quality by which every individual table would look different is called as samavaya so there are six categories of the world it is very interesting to know this dravya guna karma samanya vishesha samavaya he divided entire world in these six categories if you see the uh, order of dravyas first he talks about four fundamental elements dravya prithvi ap tej vayu akasha he doesn't he doesn't consider as the fundamental element but he considers akasha is very important quality very important dravya so prithvi ap tej vayu akash kal dik manas kal dik atma manas nav now if you see the order prithvi is very gross in nature and from thula to sukshma this journey continues and the ultimatum is mind so first he is talking about the entire world and the entire journey is destined towards mind so only with the help and the power of mind we will be able to go to the higher dimensions also while studying this parmanu theory one of my finding is there are so many similarities in modern theoretical dimension theory and parmanu theory so definitely it becomes the matter of further investigation whether we can work on this parmanu theory there might be few limitations there might be few omissions few drawbacks in the parmanu theory but they are to be explored by the modern physicist this theory unfortunately was not explored and investigated by scientific uh, material by modern scientist which is the need of an art so to conclude my this study uh it is very important to know ancient sciences also which will definitely have some roots uh of modern scientific theories then also what progression i spoke about parmanu theory that progression is exactly similar to the factorial method in mathematics n factorial is equal to n n minus 1 factorial this formula is exactly applicable to the progression where we are talking about one parmanu then two parmanus means 2 into 1 we get 2 then six parmanus means 3 into 2 into 1 then the next forming body was 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 and the next forming body was 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 and so on so yes definitely this is not some something which they viewed in meditation they must have because parmanu can be viewed by alaukika pratyaksha or yogaj pratyaksha but definitely there is some systematic calculation in the formation of these forming bodies and they are not yet explored by anybody so what i could find there is so much similarity between the factorial method so again i could say that factorial methods has got its roots again in the vaisheshika theory which is so 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 old in 6th century bc if you see the factorial method today it is invented in 11th century so again the primitiveness of the theory might come to marshi kanada for using it in parmanu theory there are many things not only parmanu theory there is no critical edition available about parmanu theory the theory which is available today uh, vaisheshika sutra grantha has got different number of sutras 
few sutras are 373 in number few are in 379 few are 395 so there is no critical addition of vaisheshika sutras that also limits the study and that is why again we need young brains to explore this further what exactly is lost there is a lot uh, so many things are lost in the entire study of vaisheshika theory the main treatise also got lost the first commentary there were so many ancient commentaries like bharadvaja commentary ravana bhashyam they are lost today dasha padarthi is the ancient uh, commentary which is available in chinese then we have to reconstruct that chinese into english and then english into sanskrit but original sanskrit commentary is lost unfortunately is that the role of the invaders played major uh, part in the incomplete availability or interpolations in the theory we really need to investigate it further so marshi kanak spoke a lot and the things are to be explored theory of parmanu will definitely help us to study further the quantum physics and nanotechnology thank you ज्ञानेन सदृशं पवित्रमिह विद्यते ज्ञानेन सदृशं पवित्रमिह विद्यते ज्ञानेन सदृशं पवित्रमिह विद्यते